The Pennsylvania State University, College of Earth and Mineral Sciences, Department of Energy and Mineral Engineering, presents The Silver Silver Chloride Electrode Laboratory Instructional Video. Equipment and Materials We will need a high impedance electrometer for electric potential measurements, one molar aqueous potassium chloride, four molar aqueous potassium chloride, one molar nitric acid, and 0 0.01 molar hydrochloric acid. silver chloride and silver powder, as well as a spool of silver wire. A one molar and four molar potassium chloride silver silver chloride reference electrodes. Pliers, scissors, sandpaper, a beaker, as well as shrinkable Teflon tubing an electric heat gun, propane torch, and sparker or lighter. Electrode preparation. Begin by cutting two six inch lengths of silver wire. Next, lightly sand the bottom one to two inches of each wire to remove any oxidation or impurities. Place both wires, sanded end down, into a clean beaker and add a small amount of nitric acid. If possible, please reuse the nitric acid in the marked storage container. Then use the nitric acid to clean the sanded edges of the wire to further improve the purity of the silver. Then return the used nitric acid to the marked storage container so that it may be reused by other students. Finally, rinse the electrodes with distilled water and wipe clean. We will now place a small amount of silver powder into one container and silver chloride powder into a separate container. We'll now use the propane torch in order to form the actual electrodes. Please ensure that the propane torch is not pointing towards you or anyone else. S turn the gas up to a moderate amount, use the sparker to ignite it, and then turn the gas flow rate down to the smallest quantity that will maintain a flame. You must be careful not to melt the silver wire completely or you'll have to start again from scratch. However, if you lose only an inch or so of the electrode, you can continue and start again with the same wire. Begin by heating the tip of the wire until it begins to glow. If you hold the opposite end of the wire, it does not conduct sufficient heat to harm your hands. However, if you want more precision, you can use the pliers to hold directly in the flame. Waving the wire through the flame ensures proper heat distribution. When the wire is sufficiently hot, dip the wire into the silver powder or roll it through the silver powder and then repeat the process by heating the silver powder until it glows. It will at that point begin to center onto the wire itself and become a single piece of silver. We'll repeat this process approximately three to five times until the silver bulb is sufficiently large, 
approximately 5 millimeters in diameter. Using some care here not to overheat the bulb will save you time in the long run by not having to repeat the entire process. We'll now repeat the entire process using silver chloride to coat the outside of the bulb. Silver chloride has a significantly lower melting point than silver, and thus less heat will be needed in order to form the final silver chloride coating on the electrode. The process should be repeated until the entire silver bulb has a coating of silver chloride. Repeat the entire process with the second wire to make two identical silver-silver chloride electrodes. Next, we'll coat the exposed silver wire with Teflon. To do this, we'll slide the silver wire into the shrinkable Teflon tubing. Leave about one inch above the bulb and then cut the shrinkable Teflon so that it's flush with the wire. Now slide the shrinkable Teflon all the way down so that it is flush with the bulb, leaving the only exposed silver at the top to function as a lead. And repeat this process with the second electrode. We'll now use the electric heat gun to shrink the Teflon onto the wire. Both the metal tip and the air coming out can cause burns, so please use caution with the heat gun. You may power it up by pressing the power button, and then press the mode button until a setting of low is on the display. Then use the right arrow to set the heat to the maximum level. Now, holding the lead side of the electrode and ensuring that the Teflon stays pushed up against the bulb, we'll heat the bulb side of the shrinkable Teflon. Once the Teflon has sealed the bulb side of the electrode, allow it to cool and then repeat on the lead side of the electrode. And repeat for both electrodes. We'll now label each electrode using masking tape. And be sure to distinguish between the electrodes by labeling them A and B, and of course including your name. Next, we'll store the electrodes in the hydrochloric acid solution that's provided in the cabinet with the other electrodes. We'll allow the electrode to sit for 24 to 48 hours, so please take the time to clean up the lab and put away all chemicals and store the beaker with the electrodes back in the cabinet so that it's not exposed to sunlight. After 48 hours, we'll return and remove the electrodes from the hydrochloric acid solution and rinse them with distilled water. We'll then transfer both electrodes to one molar potassium chloride storage solution. We'll allow the electrodes to sit in the potassium chloride solution for 24 to 48 hours. Return both beakers, the hydrochloric acid and the potassium chloride, to the cabinet underneath the counter. The experimental phase. First, we will measure the electric potential generated between our electrodes in one molar potassium chloride and the commercial reference electrode with one molar potassium chloride. Remove the one molar reference electrode from its storage solution, rinse with distilled water, and wipe dry.
we will test electrode A and electrode B independently. So remove electrode B from the test beaker for now. Along with electrode A in the one molar potassium chloride solution, place the tip of the one molar potassium chloride reference electrode. Turn on the electrometer by pressing the power button and then the zero check button. Connect one lead from the electrometer to your electrode and the second lead to the reference electrode. And be sure to use the same conventions for positive and negative throughout the experiment. Allow approximately one minute for the electric potential to reach a steady value. Record both the magnitude and sign of the electric potential generated between electrode A and the one molar reference electrode. A potential of less than three millivolts should yield an experimental error of less than 10%. Repeat this process and record the potential from electrode B with the one molar reference electrode. Disconnect the electrometer, remove the one molar reference electrode from the solution, rinse, wipe dry, and return to its storage container, and then repeat all measurements made using the four molar electrode. When you've recorded the potential of electrode A and B in one molar potassium chloride versus one and four molar reference electrodes, you are now complete with the experimental phase. You may rinse and store the four molar electrode, rinse and store your two electrodes, and power down the electrometer. Return the one molar potassium chloride test solution to the storage container. And please, before exiting the lab, clean all glassware and refill the carboy with distilled water.